It's 4th of July Friday and suddenly our tropical risk has become very real. In the past four days, it has gone from 30, 40 to now a 60% chance of formation. So now the development of at least a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm is actually going to be kind of likely. And the areas that would need to be on lookout are anywhere from the northeastern tip of Florida all the way up into the Outer Banks in North Carolina. The European ensembles are expecting development out here off of the coast of Florida near Jacksonville and pushing up into pretty much anywhere from Georgia all the way up into central North Carolina. So a pretty wide spread on where it could be, but they all follow the trend of making a landfall and then getting sucked up by a trough up here and moving out into the Atlantic. And then all of these storms are pretty weak, with none of them really eclipsing weak tropical storm status. Here's a run from our European model, and we can see very clearly an area of organized circulation, which organizes right off the coast of Florida near Jacksonville, and it actually is going to push it right up into the Georgia-South Carolina border as a weak tropical depression. So currently as it stands, it looks like development of at least something tropical is likely with a weak intensity, and the main threat would be most likely just lots of rain to these areas. Some strong winds, which could possibly knock out power, and then a little bit of surge, but it looks like the main threat would be flooding. And it appears that it would make a landfall somewhere in between Sunday and Monday. Now the environment out here is not gonna be too shabby for storm development. It is gonna have a pretty moist area to development right out here off the eastern coast of Florida, which is one of the main important factors for development. It will battle some dry air up here once it pushes inland, and it also could possibly hinder its development a little. And then this is our wind shear, and it looks like our storm will actually be battling a pretty large area of strong shear right off the eastern coast of Florida and Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, which would absolutely hinder its development. So that is one of the reasons why it looks like this storm isn't going to develop super quickly and won't be super strong. The last thing is our ocean temperatures, and obviously we have a very warm area of ocean temperatures right off the coast, which would help to feel storm development but our ocean heat content is going to be not very high, which would also hinder the development of the storm. So it's not like we'd see anything nuclear and it probably will stay at the level of a tropical depression or a very weak tropical storm if it does develop. Because of how close it's developing to the United States, we can actually see on our simulated reflectivity here and right out here, right off the coast of Florida, we can actually see a very organized area of circulation. And what this is going to do, this is actually going to bring a lot of rain in some bands with some possibly strong winds through Florida today and in the future all the way up through Saturday it looks like it will continue to do that. Another thing to mention is that there is going to be a pretty decently sized risk of severe weather today. We have a marginal risk of severe weather stretching from the southern plains all the way up into the northern plains and parts of the Midwest. Then we have a large area of just general thunderstorms expected as well. This threat is going to be mostly a threat for some scattered severe winds. We have a 5% risk of severe winds stretching from western Kansas all the way up into the U.S.-Canada border up into parts of northern Minnesota. So some scattered areas of 60 mile an hour plus gust will definitely be in play across this risk area. Then we have a small 5% risk of hail up here in parts of North Dakota and Northern Minnesota, which is gonna be mostly conditional and also very isolated to the region. And then there will also be a isolated, pretty conditional 2% slight tornado risk out here in the same region in parts of Eastern North Dakota and a decent part of Northwestern Minnesota. Here's our simulated reflectivity from our Northern Plains Midwest risk area. Up here in Minnesota is gonna be our main area where we could see all hazards of severe weather. And this is gonna be enhanced by a low pressure system and a warm front and increased deep layer shear from troughing up here in Canada. And this is gonna be around the late afternoon to evening hours. And it looks like it's gonna be a fairly linear line of storms, but in the early stages, they could pose that conditional threat for possibly a weak tornado and some hail. And our shear vectors aren't gonna be going right into the storm. They're actually gonna be kind of more parallel to it, which could possibly enhance that spin up tornado potential. So that is another reason why that risk could be realized out there. Moving down a bit more south, we could see some organized storms pop up a little earlier in the early mid-afternoon to evening hours. And this is going to be from South Dakota down into Nebraska. And this is going to be another line of storms fueled by a low pressure system and a bit of a boundary back here. And then this is also going to be helped out 
by some troughing up here in Canada. And the main threat with these storms down here is going to be just wind. Moving a bit more south is where we're going to see more storms. And these are going to stretch all the way into western parts of Kansas. And this is a look from the early mid-afternoon. And what this is going to be fueled by is actually a somewhat weak shortwave digging in pretty deep into the U.S., our high plains convergence zone. And there's also going to be a low pressure system back here and also a bit of a frontal boundary. So these storms down here are going to be also pretty linear and messy. And the threat with these is going to be almost entirely wind as well. However, it looks like these storms will coincide with when the low level jet will pick up a bit more. And it also looks like our shear vectors aren't going to be directly into the storm. And they're going to be a bit more parallel, which could enhance that spin up tornado potential. So in this line of storm stretching from Kansas into the western parts of our upper plains convergence area and then Nebraska, I actually wouldn't be surprised to possibly see a threat for some spin up tornadoes down here, which would accompany that wind risk for scattered gusts of upwards of 60 miles an hour. Then here are 500 millibar winds and we can see that in our main risk area, we're going to have a bit of a short wave moving through our northern plains to Midwest region around midday which will help to fuel some of those storms up there and then we have a pretty large short wave which digs all the way down into colorado and will overspread much of the central plains and parts of the upper southern plains which will also help to initiate storms out there then we have our jet maximum which is going to be a bit further up in canada and that is one of the reasons why organizing shear could possibly not really be out here much at all tomorrow and that is a hindering factor for a lot of those storms and why they're not expected to be super duper strong. And then also we see more flow back here in parts of the Rockies, which is another reason why just general thunderstorms could be expected back there. And then these are 700 millibar winds, which are associated with tornado genesis. And we can see that we actually have a decent bit of flow at 700 millibars up in our main tornado risk area up here in parts of Minnesota in eastern North Dakota, which is another reason why that tornado threat could be realized. This is weather sounding from our main risk area up into Minnesota and parts of eastern North Dakota. And we can see that we do have some curvy in our hodograph, then it extends out a bit, which could help with organizing storms. We do see some veering in our winds, which could also help to organize storms. And then our low level holistic is going to be pretty decent, and our low level shear is also going to be nearing that 20 knot threshold, which would be considered decent low level shear. So that is one of the reasons why there is a bit of an isolated conditional tornado threat out there. But our bulk shear is going to be below 20 knots. And really, we like it to be around 40 knots to see more organized storms. So that is absolutely going to be a hindering factor with those storms today. Our lowest cloud level is going to be a bit above how high we'd like it to be for a tornado threat to have a higher potential of being realized. But cloud tops overspreading the risk area and possibly lowering that is definitely a possibility. So that's not something which would be a reason to make that threat zero. We do see a decent bit of cape up here near our freezing layer and our lapse rates are going to be decent at 7.1 Celsius decreasing per kilometer. So that is another reason for that isolated conditional hail threat. There is some dry air loft, which could possibly help to support that threat of severe winds. Then we do have a very moist environment at over a 70 dew point, which would help to support that threat for all hazards of severe weather. We also see a pretty juiced up air mass eclipsing 3000 Cape and getting near 3400. And then our precipital water is going to be 1.84 and that's going to be coupled with a downdraft Cape of nearing 1500. So another reason why that threat for severe winds could be realized then our three cape is going to be 164, which could help to fuel that threat for all hazards of severe weather. So in summary out here in our main risk area, I definitely see all hazards of severe weather being possible, but that is definitely going to be hindered by how much bulk shear we have out here and how organized those storms can be. And then here is another sounding from down to our Kansas and Nebraska risk area. Our hodograph isn't really indicative of any certain types of severe weather. Our low level felicity is going to be low, our low level shear is going to be low, and our bulk shear is going to be low. But we do have some weak fearing in our winds, so that is something that could help with storm organization. Although our bulk shear is going to be so low that storm organization is not really something I see occurring out here in this region. We do have a decent bit of cape near our freezing layer, but our freezing layer is going to be super high and our lapse rates are going to be super low at below 6 Celsius decreasing per kilometer. So that threat for hail out there is going to be almost zero. We see very high low level lapse rates in a moist environment which would help to fuel that threat for severe winds. And then we do see a tad bit of dry air loft, which could also help to support that threat. And then our cape is nearing 3000, which would help to support that threat 
of strong severe storms out here in Kansas. Siren precipital water is 1.84 inches and that is going to be coupled with a downdraft cape of nearing 1300. So another reason why that threat of severe winds could definitely be realized out here. Then our three cape is going to be 141, which would help to make that threat of severe winds be realized and possibly a threat for some spin-up tornadoes along that line when the low-level jet kicks in around sunset.